What's up guys and welcome to this month's Patreon pick video. So every single month I give my patrons a chance to pick a video for me to do. They really like rankings. This month is a ranking as well. I give them the option to just throw out whatever topics they want. Then I put it on a poll in which everyone comes out on top is the video that I'm doing. I'm actually doing two for them this month, so next week you'll see another one. And this video is also brought to you by Skillshare. So stay to the end and I will be giving you a lot of information on a very cool online learning community that you can join with a nice exclusive link down below to save you some money on it. But this month's video is on my top 10 horror hidden gems. This is a list of movies that I either think is criminally underrated, criminally underseen, or both. So without wasting any time, let's kick it off with number 10. And number 10 is a movie called 13 Sins. Also, these are not really in any particular order. I'm not ranking them from worst to best. This is just 10 movies. 13 Sins is kind of like a movie called Nerve that came out about, what, two, three years ago? Uh, I think it was about within a year of release of each other, but this one is much better in my opinion. 13 Sins essentially tells a story of this guy who gets a random text on his phone saying, hey, do this task and you'll get a hundred bucks. So he does it and then he gets another text. Do this and it gets a little bit crazier and you'll get 200 bucks or 500 bucks and every single task that they ask him to do goes from swat the fly in your car all the way up to saw the arm off of your high school buddy. And it's just a very cool, interesting movie. I mean, a little bit cheesy with the acting here and there. You got Ron Perlman in a small role in this, but I think that there's enough gore, there's enough craziness, there's enough interest in the concept itself that I actually have a really good time with this one. And a year or so later when I saw Nerve, even though that one was much more high budget, a lot more high octane, I actually preferred this one. So if you like that concept, if that sounds cool to you, definitely check out 13 Sins. I think it's a cool little ride. Number nine was actually one of my favorite horror films from last year, and it was only on Netflix, and that is The Perfection. This is a movie that I didn't know anything about when I started watching it, walked in completely blind. I didn't see any trailers for it, really barely even knew the plot of it. It looked like there was some kind of a music school thing going on, and it tells the story of this girl who goes to this very prestigious music school, and she was like the the protege at one point. She was like the godsend student and she is now mentoring this newer godsend student. And very quickly things go off the rails. I'm not gonna tell you too much about the plot, but things get gross and crazy and insane. And no matter how much you think you might be understanding what's going on in this movie, the movie will pull the rug wrap from under you and show you that you don't know shit about what's going on. So it's a very cool movie. It's a very interesting plot. It really goes for it. I mean, even for a Netflix film, there's some very gory stuff, some very macabre stuff, some pretty gratuitous nudity in there. So uh, yeah, it's got a little bit of everything for everybody. Number eight is gonna be The Loved Ones. Now this was actually directed by the guy that brought us The Devil's Candy, which I was a big fan of a couple years ago. This, I believe, was his first film. Don't quote me on that. But it tells the story of this innocent high school kid that gets asked to the dance by this girl, Lola. He politely declines and she not so politely gets her revenge on him. He essentially gets locked up in her house and they have their own little demented version of the prom. It's wild, it's insane. As soon as small scale as that story feels, it just goes batshit crazy the longer the movie goes on. Lola is one of the more underrated horror villains that you've ever seen. Like that chick is terrifying. It makes you just want to say yes to any advance you get from any woman. Yes, yes, I'll go to the prom with you, please just don't. Don't tie me up and put bleach in my lungs. Number seven is a creature feature that flew right under the radar and that is called Splinter. It's a very small scale movie about four strangers stuck in this gas station and there's this really strange but very creative monster outside that basically starts from a little tiny splinter, works its way parasitically into your body and turns you into this little machine of destruction where you walk around and you're basically like, as the scenes <laughs> where the splinter is taking over humans and their fingers are like snapping backwards and their arms are going 90 degrees to the right. Ugh. If you're not a fan of Broken Bones, this is not the movie for you. But it's a very cool creature feature and I like bottle movies. I like movies that stay in small confined locations because it just adds to the claustrophobia, adds to the paranoia. And I think it's actually a pretty underrated, not only monster, but an underrated horror flick. Number six is actually a movie that was a Patreon review, and that is Girl House. This is a movie that I had never heard of before, and I did a review for it, I believe, two years ago now, and it starts off in like the typical fashion of what you would think a slasher is, 
but it's kind of a cool little spin on that where you have these cam girls that have this little rich ass mansion getaway where they all live in this house and each room has their own little server that goes to all of their fans. So it's basically like a mansion. It's like a Playboy mansion for the 21st century. And one of the bigger subscribers to this girl house cam website is a bit of a psycho. And whenever he weirds these girls out and they all block him completely, he goes a little fucking nuts about it. So it gets really gory. There's some really cool kills. I actually like the mask and the look of the killer. I'm really surprised that more people don't talk about this movie because for slasher fans, this has damn near everything you want from that type of movie. Number five is another Patreon request. Thank you guys so much for showing me these awesome movies. Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon. This one is actually a mockumentary horror comedy type take. And it's basically, you're following this documentary crew as they're learning and interviewing this guy, Leslie Vernon, who is basically this up and coming slasher serial killer. It takes place in a universe where like Freddy Krueger and Michael Myers and Jason were all real. And it follows all of the rules of slashers as if that's like things that the killers have to follow. Like he makes jokes about having to walk and not run. Like, you know, Jason and Michael are always walking, but they always catch up to the kids. There's jokes about that. You have Robert Englund in here as a play on Loomis. Like, it's just a very cool movie that it's not necessarily scary, but there's so many love letters in here to slasher fans that if you were a fan of the genre, especially if you have knowledge of all the rules and all of the, the history of the genre, there's a lot to chew on in here. And it's just a very fun ride. It's one of the more unique movies that I've ever seen. And I'm shocked we've never gotten a sequel. What the fuck? Number four is a movie that a lot of you have probably heard me talk about before, especially the soundtrack, and that is Trick or Treat. Not the Trick or Treat, the horror anthology. This is actually an 80s metal horror movie. It's a movie that I grew up with, one of those classic gems that my father gave to me that uh, not a lot of people talk about, not a lot of people know about, and I'm here to change that. Trick or Treat tells the story of this kid who idolizes this rock metal god, Sammy Kerr, and right at the beginning of the movie, Sammy Kerr dies in this hotel fire. So the kid is distraught and he eventually gets a hold of the last or the, really the only copy of Sammy's upcoming record. And when he plays it backwards, he can talk to his rock idol from beyond the grave and some sinister things start happening. It has by far my favorite movie soundtrack of all time. It's just a kick ass 80s metal album that just happens to be a soundtrack. So there's so much about this movie that I love. I mean, if you've never seen it before, there's definitely some low budget aspects. There's definitely a little bit of cheese here and there, but if you like metal, if you're a metal head and you love horror films, there's a lot in this movie that's just an absolute blast. And eventually, hopefully this October, I'm gonna do an official review for it because it's time. All right, guys, before I get to my top three, I want to take a moment to talk about my sponsors, Skillshare. It is an online learning community. It is a whole plethora of classes from any subject that you can basically think of. I mean, you have things all the way from gardening, all the way up to low budget filmmaking and photography, which is actually classes that I'm looking at right now and going through because it plays in right into what I'm doing. I might even be able to expand my horizons beyond this and do some things that I might not have felt like I was able to do because of what I learned in these online communities. There's a lot of people here that will keep you coming back, make you feel like you're actually part of a group that has the common interest. It will hold your attention to where you can expand your horizons and learn a lot of things that maybe you didn't think you had the time to that makes it very convenient and easy in Skillshare. And I have an exclusive link down below. So if you are interested in Skillshare and checking out what they have to offer, the first 1,000 people to click my link down below to join Skillshare is gonna get two whole months for free. So definitely take advantage of this. Check out Skillshare. They're an awesome sponsor and an awesome company. And it's just a very easy, cool, and convenient way for all of us, especially right now, whenever we're all stuck at home and can't really go out and do a whole lot, might as well expand your horizons and learn some new stuff through Skillshare. Number three is one of, if not the coolest and best vampire movie that I have seen in the past 10 years or so, which doesn't have a lot of competition, mind you, because of the Twilight era. Stakeland. This is a movie that I don't remember exactly how I heard about it. I think I might have just passed like a Facebook advertisement when it came out. There's actually a second one, too, that I think is just about as good. So if you like the first one, check out the second one, too. But Stakeland is a very gritty, dark, serious 
post-apocalyptic vampire movie. And if you're like me, you've seen just about everything vampire movies have to offer. This movie certainly takes some turns and some different twists that you would not necessarily expect from the vampire genre. There's some kills and some things that the vampires do that definitely um, <laughs> you don't see too often in vampire movies. The two lead characters are very interesting and they have a cool little dynamic with each other. You have this younger kid who loses his family at the beginning and kind of has to rise to the occasion of living in this horrible post-apocalyptic world that's taken over by vampirism. And then you have the older grizzly hunter named Mister, who's kind of like the Van Helsing, and he's the one who's teaching and kind of guiding this kid through and showing him how you're gonna survive. It's just a badass vampire movie. And like I said, since Twilight, we have not gotten very many of them, and this is by far the best that I have seen since that whole stink air started. Number two is Session Nine. This is another movie that a lot of you have probably heard me talk about before. This is a made-for-TV movie, I believe for USA, which is surprising because it definitely goes for the jugular with how dark it does get. This is not for everybody. This is definitely a slow burn, much more psychological, atmospheric type horror film. But if you're somebody that likes that, if you're not necessarily impressed by splat and gore and you know practical effects and you just want a movie to get inside of your head session nine is one of the best this tells the story of a group of asbestos cleanup crew that has to go into this abandoned asylum and clean it up in a week and the deeper they get into their job the deeper that this asylum and all of the dark entities inside of it kind of start to seep their way into these guys lives and there's this whole aesthetic where one of them finds these interview tapes of one of the more dangerous inmates in this asylum. And each session he gets to ramps up the tension. There's like these multiple personalities, this really great sound design with the voices that this person is having come out of their mouths where it's a woman, but you'll hear little kids voices and man voices. And it really does get under your skin. There is some low budget aspects to it. There is some certain sound design with like some of the kill scenes, the way that people scream, it's hard to explain unless you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about, that definitely feel made for TV. But aside from those couple small little things you can take against it very easily, this is one of, if not the best, atmospheric horror film that I've ever seen. Leading all the way up to number one, which is a movie that you guys are probably sick of hearing me talk about, because I know it's been on a couple other of my lists before, one of them being best endings, and that is Frailty. Frailty is one of the most underappreciated horror films that I've ever seen because to me, this deserves to be on everybody's list of best of all time, honestly. Every list that I see that's best of all time, it's always the same movies, Nightmare on Elm Street, The Thing, Exorcist. Frailty deserves to be up in that echelon because it's just so damn good. You have this father that comes home, played by Bill Paxton, who also directed this film, and he just has this vision overnight from God that he and his sons are supposed to start destroying demons, preparing for this battle between heaven and hell. And his sons are like, what the fuck are you talking about? At least the older son. The younger son is so impressionable that he just kind of goes along with it. And his two sons are essentially stuck helping this man murder people. And the middle son, or the older son that you are basically taking this journey with, he's kind of like your narrator, believes that his father is just murdering people and he has to be complicit in it. It's a movie that has a lot of twists and turns. It has multiple twists throughout the end, which most movies that try to do more than one twist fall on their face in my opinion, and each twist just gets better and better and better in frailty. It's an awesome movie. I cannot recommend it enough easily in my like top 15 horror films of all time. And it does come in at number one for my biggest horror hidden gem. All right, guys, that is my list. Let me know down below if you have seen these movies, if you like them, if you think they deserve to be on this list. Is there some that I missed that you think are very underappreciated? Those are the movies that I love to hear about the most. We all know the popular movies, but the underrated hidden gems are the ones that most times I walk away holding and cherishing most. So let me know your list down below. Give me some cool recommendations. Thank you once again to all my patrons. Look out next week for another Patreon pick because you guys are so awesome. You deserve two this month. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Be sure to check that link out down below, guys, and get some learning on. And please like and share this video and hit that subscribe button. As always, remember, opinions are like assholes. That doesn't mean you have to be.